I just built this quad and I noticed something very interesting. Something that I knew was true, that I, but I haven't tested in a long time. This is my new kind of frame that I'm testing out. It's an alien style setup, the battery's on top, GoPro's on top. Uh, it has a all up weight of about 590 grams, which is quite hefty. I actually haven't had a quad that heavy in a really long time. So I haven't really tested things on really heavy quads. And all my quads are typically very light. This quad is 100 grams lighter all up weight, eh, about 95 grams lighter all up weight. What I noticed was that I tried this, this quad on three different props so far. The basic 5x4x3, actually four different props. The 5x4x3, the, the 5x4.3x3V1S, the Gemfan 5152, and the Emax Avan. And almost all of these props feel identical. <laughs> and that was really a shock to me. And so what I was thinking about was disc loading theory and static thrust versus, versus dynamic thrust. And what I remembered was that all these props under static load, they perform very, very similar. Some of them will have more thrust, some of them will have less thrust, some of them will flex some, some of them won't. But for the most part, you're not feeling the characteristics of the prop. So in a previous video, I asked you guys to test the 5x4x3, the standard one, versus the 5x4.3x3v1s and just the regular v1s and see which one you like better or if it one was springy one was bouncy and i was feeling that the 4.3 pitch the new hq prop just felt generally kind of bouncy to me and the throttle was just unpredictable and that's because well the the reason why you guys may have felt something different is probably because the craft weight really does impact the way the prop works so when you're on a lighter quad like this the props actually make a huge difference. When I put the Avan blade on a, on a light quad, this one is about 505, 510 grams all up weight with a GoPro. Those props feel so like grippy through the air. They just, just pull you through turns and just sound incredible through the air and they make such little noise. But when you put it on something that's 600 grams, they make just as noise, just as much noise as anything else, and it just feels the same as everything else because the motors are just working so hard to keep you up in the air that you're not really getting the props dynamic work. Like it's not dynamically working in the air. It's stuck just trying to make static thrust to keep you up rather than using its 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 mechanics and engineering to move you forward and properly perform how it's supposed to. So Ideally, if you're going to carry a GoPro or have a 600 gram setup, you would move to 6 inch. And the 6 inch setup is really, really good. It flies amazingly nice. I haven't flown a 6 inch in a long time too, but it flies really well because the disc loading of a 6 inch blade is much, much higher. So whereas a 5 inch blade, the maximum disc loading that I would recommend is about 550 grams, really max all up weight. When you move up to six inch, that goes up to around 650 grams all up weight. You add about 100 grams to give you a similar kind of performance as the five inch at 550 grams. And that's excellent because a target of 600 grams for a six inch is really easy to hit. Whereas a target of 550 grams for an alien style build like this, which is really easy to live with, really nice to fly just because it just works, it's really standard, it's really balanced, is really hard to get it too much under 600 grams. So you're stuck with whatever prop you have because no prop really makes that big of a difference. You might as well just stick to the regular old 5x4x3 because it's kind of the most efficient. I get like 20, not even 20, like 15 to 20 seconds more flight time on this basic prop than I do on the Avan prop. So it's kind of not interesting at all. So if you have a heavy build, you know, don't read into props so much. Just stick to a basic prop or whatever prop you like on any of your other quads. It's all gonna, it's all gonna fly similarly because you're not properly, it's not properly loaded in order to actually perform the way you want it to. That also makes a lot of sense why I don't like three inch so much. The problem with three inch is that if you wanna get the same kind of performance as a 250 gram five inch quad, you have to have it have a dry weight of like 85 or 90 grams. I don't even know what, something ridiculously low, I don't remember. but it's kind of impossible. So this little three inch, no matter how light you build it, you'll never get it to that low, low weight that you need it to be. So it'll always fly like it's a heavy build. Of course, you get the benefit of the agility of a three inch craft and something small that can squeeze through cracks and rotate much more freely and easily. But for the most part, it's flying like a heavy quad. It's flying like an overly disc loaded quad. So whatever prop you put on it feels the same. And that's why when I was flying the new Racecraft three inch prop, 
versus the HQ quad blade or the HQ tri blade or the UIS tri blade or the quad blade. You barely feel a difference between a tri blade and a quad blade on a three inch. Really, not that much. It's not that significant of a difference, and they all feel generally the same. <laughs> so that explains a lot of it. This is like an epiphany that I had, you know, yesterday when I was testing all these props. So something interesting, something to note, and that's it. Don't forget to floss.